What's going on everyone? Thank you for clicking on this video. I have been spoiled lately. Amp Rides has been spoiling me. Let me uh, test their very powerful e-bikes. If you're looking for a powerful e-bike, check them out. Amp Rides, this is the Razorback bike. I just did a review on the Volt not long ago. This is the Razorback, and I'm gonna take this for a spin today and tell you all about this one, but let me pull it out of the sun so you can get a better look at this. We'll talk about it really quick. Then I'm gonna I'm gonna show you how this baby performs. It is a, it's, I mean, yeah. <laughs> this is something to talk about. This is something to talk about because I didn't think it was gonna be as good as it is. It is really good. So uh, let, let's pull it out in the sunlight so I can tell you more about the components really quick. Then we'll do some performance tests. I'll run this baby up to its very fast top speed and then we'll wrap things up at the end. And maybe I might just let Papa Citizen ride this too because I wanna see if I can convince him of this mid-drive motor. It has a mid-drive, Bafang 1000 watt mid-drive motor in this tiny little bike. This, this is supposed to be the fastest folding e-bike in the USA. And we're gonna find out today if that's true or not. So let's check it out. All right, my power hungry e-bike friends, you're looking at the Razorback from Amp Rides. They make some very powerful e-bikes. So if that's what you're looking for, check them out. I'm gonna blaze through some of the stats on this bike, but more importantly, I wanna get out and ride it and show you what it can do. So. Let's tell you what you get for your money here. Uh, this bike is $3,500 and could go up depending on what package you select. They offer different packages with different handlebars and front forks and headlights. Um, I think top of the line is Elite package and that's somewhere around $3,700. So you've got 20 by four tires, Mission Command from V Tire Company. 20 by four uh, brakes are awesome. Tektro Dorado four piston brakes uh, 203 millimeter on the brake disc there so extra large brakes extra stopping power fantastic brakes no complaints there whatsoever that's kind of top of the line braking system on this thing what else comes with rack and fenders you can see you've got a battery hiding in the rear rack so that's a 21 amp hour battery pack inside there has a separate switch that you turn on turns the hail, tail light on Inside the frame is another battery pack, 14 amp hours. So you got 35 amp hours of battery pack on this bike. That is a lot. That is a lot, but you need a lot to feed this motor. This is a Bafang Ultramax 1000 watt mid-drive motor. It's a very powerful motor, basically twice the amount of torque that you get from most of these direct-to-consumer e-bikes. A lot of them have just a 750 watt rear hub motor in them, and it's about 85 newton meters of torque this is 160 newton meters of torque it is insanely powerful now i will say that most e-bikers prefer the hub drive systems where the motor is in the back wheel and all it does is spin your wheel you don't really have to worry about what gear you're in they rarely even change gears right they just put it in fifth gear and leave it this system with the motor being right here it's turning your front chain ring turns the chain turns gears turns the wheel wheels like the last part of the drivetrain and you got to keep an eye on what gear you're in you need to ride this like, honestly, like a regular bicycle. If you come to a hill, you don't want to be in eighth gear, right? It'd be too hard to pedal going up the hill. Same concept here. You don't want this to be in eighth gear going up a hill. That's a lot of stress on this drive chain. You could actually break the chain if you're not careful what you're doing. So drive it like a motorcycle or a manual transmission car. You want to be in the, in these high gears, you know, seven, eight gear if you want to go top speed. And if you're climbing a hill, you want to be in the low gears, gear one and two. It gives you the most torque and the most power. So because of that, I think most e-bikers shy away from the mid-drive. However, this bike, this bike is kind of changing my mind. This thing is so smooth. I, well, I'll demonstrate a little bit later. I don't want to get too carried away on it right now, but it is a very smooth operating system. That's one thing that really impressed me and shocked me about this bike. I did not expect it to be this refined and this smooth. I was looking at it online going, okay, you crammed this giant mid-drive motor into a folding e-bike. I mean, is that like swapping an LS motor into a Mazda Miata? Is that gonna work? Is it, it's, it's very refined. That's, I'm still shocked at that, but we'll cover more on that later. later. I just wanna give you some of the specs here. What else? Eight speed uh, gears. And then the front chain rings 56 tooth, and that's 1134. Fantastic gearing. That's what the gearing should be for a powerful bike like this when you can go 30 plus miles an hour. You never run out of pedal. So great setup on the gearing. The bike does fold, folds in half right here. And the handlebars also fold. 
So it is supposed to be the fastest folding e-bike in the USA. We'll find that out. Comes with a suspension seat post and a nice comfy seat. I really like that seat. What else is going on on this bike? We talked about motor, tires, batteries, a lot of battery capacity on this. The paint job is crazy. It looks like a, reminds me when I was a kid catching rainbow trout. It just, it's got a rainbow effect in the sunlight. Very cool paint job. It looks like a shark and it does say shark on it right there too. On the handlebars, you got full color display. Probably won't be able to see it in the sunlight here, but I'll turn it on. Do my best to hide the sun, but great display. Uh, it shows you everything you need to see there. I won't dwell on that. Your button cluster here, it's got a left-hand thumb throttle, locking round rubber grips. That's good. You got your paddle shifters, eight gears to pick from there. I will mention that this bike is big. You know, 20 inch wheels, but still, it is not a kid's bike. This is a large bicycle. The minimum seat height is 37 inches. A touch over 37 inches from the ground to top of seat. That's very tall. I'm six feet tall with long legs and I can get like the balls of my feet down. I can't even flat foot this thing with the seat the whole way down. You could eliminate a few inches by taking out the suspension post, but then you kind of lose that comfort. It's okay for me, but short rider would have a tough time on this. It is also heavy. Two batteries, two big batteries. And it's, I think I want, on my scale is 94 and a half pounds. So it's not a light bike. Keep that in mind if you need something easy to carry around this one's pretty heavy now i mentioned there's other packages the elite package uh, some of the things you get i think you get different forks different handlebars you get the bmx style handlebars uh probably the cushion grips again and i'm not sure what else because this bike already comes stock with those four piston caliper brakes the upgraded brakes with the 203 millimeter rotor the biggest brakes i've ever had on a bike but this is a good looking bike i mean can you see that paint job you see the rainbow it comes through on that silver sparkle. And then look at the chain ring on this thing. I've never seen one like that. It's very cool. I think they come in gold as well, but fun bike, powerful bike, very refined. Let's go show you what this thing can do. All right, we're about to do a top speed run. My battery's at 53 volts, so it's pretty charged. It's a 48 volt system. So we're at 53 volts. We'll do speed run first. How do you hit top speed on a mid drive? A couple things, pump up your tires so they're nice and firm lock out the front suspension you want to have your battery fully charged you want to have the seat positioned where you can pedal you want to slowly build up to the high gear so it's gonna we need some running room you know you can't just hit top speed in two seconds you gotta climb through the gears so start out in you know four or five and just build up through until you get to eighth gear and you got to be in the highest pedal assist which we'll put it into five right now and we're gonna hold down the plus sign for a few seconds and put it into sport mode. All right, a lot of traffic on this road, but we're off and running now. Let's shift up through here. We're in seventh gear. Let's get to eighth. All right, let's give it full power. So I'll leave it to you to decide what the top speed is. Do you trust the wheel sensor that's in the wheel or do you trust the satellite in outer space? I don't know, but it's quick. I mean, it's, it takes a minute to get up to speed, but once you get going, man, this thing rolls right along. It, even with these big fat knobby tires on it. I mean, you put street tires on it, it might even go faster. All right, had to stop in the shade for a second, take a break. It's like high 90s. In North Carolina right now so taking a breather we're gonna head over towards the hills that I know of we'll do some hill climbs with the bike and I'll show you that and uh, as we ride over there I'll, I'll tell you more about what it's like riding this bike because there's some interesting things to point out that surprised me and are very good so let's go do that 
All right, I'll give you a quick taste of the throttle only speed on this. We're in like fifth gear. Let's uh, bump it up. Six. Bump it up to seven. We'll just do it in seventh. There's one more gear to go. But I mean, it cruises around effortless 30 miles an hour. Got great, great throttle speed on this. Look at this. Not even in high gear. Can we get to high gear? Watch the curve here real quick. All right. But it takes, I mean, it takes a while to build up to it. But I mean, 30 miles an hour with ease. Here's a couple other things I noticed about this bike. I love riding standing up like this. And the handlebars are nice and tall. So I don't have to hunch over and lean over while I'm riding, which is amazing. And the handlebars are adjustable, so they can go even taller if you need them to. The handlebars are okay. I mean, they're plenty wide. They give you good control. I think this bike would be better with the BMX style bars that they offer in the Elite package though. I think you'd have more control over the front end. So these are good, um, but I think it'd be better with the BMX personally, but that's personal preference there. But it's still, you know, it's still nimble. And I just, I love being able to do this and just stand up and ride. I ride like this a lot. I don't know if that's, if that's just me or if other people do that, but it's very, very comfortable to do this. The next thing that surprised me on this bike was the torque management system. It has that little sensor in it. So when you're shifting gears, uh, it cuts the power from the motor a split second to allow the gear to shift. It's just easier on the drivetrain. I found this one to be pretty smooth. The other mid-drive I have, it can get a little crunchy as you're uh, changing gears. You hear a crunching, popping noise where it just didn't time it correctly. This one's uh, pretty smooth. Seems to cut it at the right time. There wasn't a whole lot of crunchy popping every once in a while maybe, but I found the torque management system to be pretty smooth on this, which makes it a smoother ride. And here's the most surprising part of this bike, and that is the torque sensor, right? 90% of these bikes that are direct to manufacturer, you know, direct to consumer from the manufacturer, they all have a cadence sensor, this little thing by the pedal that recognizes when the pedals are turning and it gives you power, but it just dumps all the power in at once. It doesn't modulate it at all. It's like, oh, the pedals are turning, boom, full power, and you end up taking off like crazy, right? This one's got a torque sensor, so it doesn't recognize that the pedals are turning. It recognizes how hard you're pushing. So you can be riding, let's take it down to low speed right here. I'm going to take pedal assist five. We're in the highest level pedal assist. Look how slow we can ride. And I'm turning the pedals right now. I'm not pushing on them. So it's saying, okay, it doesn't need power. Now, if I push, it takes right off like crazy. So it recognizes how hard you're pushing. It makes you feel more connected to the bike. It feels more like a regular bike because the harder you push, the faster it goes and the more power it gives, right? So the torque sensor makes this feel very refined as well. And you, like I said, you just feel more connected to the experience of it, being that it's recognizing how hard you're pushing. So it makes you just feel like you have Superman legs, essentially. And everything you do and everything you input is, you know, multiplied by five. So great power delivery on this bike. Well, I really like that about it, honestly. I, I've only had like one other torque sensor bike and it wasn't quite as powerful of a motor. So it wasn't as dramatic of a feel as this one. All right, let's do a quick hill climb. I've actually got it in fifth gear. Ideally, it probably should be in a lower gear, but we'll see what happens in fifth. All right, taking right off. I'm not timing it because time's kind of irrelevant. The mid drives just are more known for the torque and, and when you need to climb a hill, you kind of want a mid drive power. You can utilize the mechanical gears to give you an edge. But you know, no problem. Just cruising right up this hill, effortless. Let's do a quick check of the brakes, see how they work. Wow, okay, yeah, strong. Lock up the wheel, no problem. Look at that Carolina sky, Carolina blue. That is, it doesn't even look real. Now this bike comes from Amp Rides with a suspension seat post, so it's a pretty cushy ride when you're going over a bumpy field like this. But we're gonna head over here, 
slow down, slow down. Okay, let's head over here. We'll slow down, get into, uh, let's just drop it all the way down. We're gonna go down into first gear. And I'm gonna do this short, steep little hill climb that we, we do with bikes that a lot of times they fail because they just don't have the power. This bike has got plenty of power to do this. This bike is, the Razorback is yawning right now saying, you want me to climb that? Okay, let's try it. Yep, right up it, no problem. What's it say on the website? This uh, bike has little respect for hills. <laughs> I would agree. I would agree with that. I wanna scoop back home now. Let's let Papa Citizen try this bike. I'm curious to see what he thinks of it. He doesn't like mid-drive motors. So will he, will this change his mind? I don't, I don't think it will, but I really wanna see him ride it and see what he thinks of it. It'd be good to get a opinion of a older gentleman I won't tell you his exact age, but uh, he's probably the demographic of my channel. <laughs> I think it's, what is it, like 75% of people that watch my channel are over the age of 45. It's like 45 to 75. I'm not even in my own demographic. How weird is that? You know, I consider myself to be an extremely lucky guy. I'm very, very fortunate that I've had the opportunity to ride and test and experience so many different types of e-bikes. And it's because of all of you that watch these videos that I continue to have the opportunity to do that. So thank you so much for your support. And although I recognize that I'm a very, very fortunate guy, there's someone else too that has been very fortunate because my father, I think, has tested almost every single bike that I've received. He's been on and riding as well. I think he's probably been on over 30 e-bikes himself. So he's a lucky guy too. And let's see what he had to say about the Amp Rides it's Razorback. Definitely better than the XP, you know, steering wise goes. I mean, I don't feel insecure on this one like I do on that one. It definitely goes. Yeah. I mean, when you hit that throttle, it. It's it takes right on. I mean, I came up that hill, hit 20 mile an hour easily, quickly. Quickly. Yeah, it's got some good power in it. Yeah. Figure out the shifting and you'll be fine, right? Yeah, I mean, that's right now as I ride the other bikes, it's like I said, I leave it in seventh gear and just change the pedal assist to what I want. Here I'm more trying to figure out which gear, which pedal assist, or what I want to do. And I think you just kind of need to pretend it's a regular bicycle. Probably. You know, and shift it as you would a normal bike. Here. Yeah. I think if you just forget about everything else and just think of it as a regular bike and shift it as you would a regular bike, that, that would probably solve all your probably. confusion. <laughs> but you know, when you're old like me, you get used to that pedal, thinking you gotta do yeah. that pedal assist. No, that's, I think that's like 90% of e-bikers, they just, put it in one gear and leave it and because it doesn't matter on the hub drive no. well it's a nice bike i mean it's it's good solid i feel very stable on it you know it's not the handlebars are not bouncing i took it through the grass down there and up and down the banks and i had no trouble at all i mean it rode nice so. yeah i was i was kind of shocked at how smooth this was i wasn't expecting that out of it it is heavy though. Maybe that's why it's feels so stable. It's it like, could be. it's 95 pounds. I mean, Boy, yeah. All right, everybody. I have thoroughly enjoyed my time with the Razorback bike, but unfortunately this bike has to continue on its journey around the country. There's a few other folks that get to ride and test and experience the Razorback. So I'll be shipping this out next week off to them. But before I go, I wanted to mention a few other things about this bike in case you were considering it. So here's what I've got to tell you. Number one, it's a pretty tall bike. I found it comfortable to ride because I'm six feet tall, I have pretty long legs. The minimum seat height is I think like 37 inches, so it's a pretty tall bike. Uh, I was able to get into a really good comfortable ride position, but if you're a shorter rider, that might be pretty difficult for you. It's also a pretty heavy bike. This is a 95 pound bike, so if you're looking for something that's easy to sling around, I mean, this is not really that light. If you're gonna be doing a lot of lifting, you're gonna wanna take the batteries out of it. 95 pounds is pretty heavy for an e-bike. Most of them are around the 72, 73 mark. So keep that in mind. Now with regard to the power, it's a very powerful bike. Powerful motor, right? 1000 watt Bafang mid-drive motor in this bike, but it wasn't really harsh or 
jerky or abrupt. It was very smooth. I thought even in like pedal assist five, it engages very smooth. I think that has to do a lot with the torque sensor in the bike. So it was never jarring or going to put you off balance. It was a very smooth ride. But one thing I did notice about it is I, for a while there, I was riding around at low speed and I had it in pedal assist five. So it was a lot of power on demand when you wanted it. And after 30 minutes of doing that, it really heated up the motor a lot. Now I did read that online as well, that that's one characteristic of the ultra motor is that if you lug it around in high power at low speed, it heats it up quick. It doesn't like to do that. So keep that in mind. It's also a very quiet motor, probably quieter than the BBSO2, that 750 Bafang I've got on the wall over there. This Bafang ultra motor was definitely quieter than that. You don't hear it running as much. The free wheel did kind of tick loud though in the, in the back wheel. I noticed that, but you get used to that. I'm also going to say this bike is more for the pedaling e-biker. If you're an e-biker that pedals a lot, you like to shift through the gears, you like to ride the bike as a regular bike, you're going to love this thing. If you're the e-biker that just jumps on the bike, you never shift, you never pedal, and you just throttle around the greenways, you're probably not going to like this one as much. So think about how you're going to use the bike. Now, given this bike has a lot of power and you've got the mid-drive system, I could see somebody using this more as a cargo bike. It comes with a rear rack and the battery doesn't take up any space on the rack. So you've got plenty of cargo capacity on the rear rack. You could also get uh, like a stem bag to put on that handlebar stem there and carry a decent amount with you. Also with that mid-drive power, if you're looking to tow a trailer or something like that, this could be a good option for that one as well. Another thing I was gonna mention is the bike has two batteries. There's one in the rear rack there's one inside the frame, but you don't need both batteries in the bike for it to work. It'll work with just one battery, one or the other, either one works. So for whatever reason, you only one, wanted one battery on the bike, you'd be fine, you could still ride it. Now, if you're considering the Razorback bike, I'm guessing this is not your first e-bike. Most people tend to buy a cheaper one to start out just to see if they're even gonna like it before they would spend a good chunk of change on an e-bike, right? This is 3,500 bucks and it goes up from there if you get different package levels. So is it worth that price? There's a lot of extras you get on this. As a person that has upgraded many bikes, I've spent tons of money upgrading my custom bike. I've probably spent over $5,000 upgrading that bike. And this thing's pretty much as powerful and as fast as that bike I wasted so much money on. So you're getting upgraded brakes, you're getting the four piston brakes, you're getting a really strong motor, you're getting upgraded gearing, all stuff I've done to my bike I had to customize, right? You're getting a decent screen, color screen on it. A lot of bikes don't have it. Better shifting mechanism with the paddle shifters. Crazy amount of battery capacity. More than mine has on it. And you get all of this right out the box. This You pull it out of the box and it goes 37 miles an hour and has 35 amp hours of battery pack on that thing. So that's why that price is where it is because you're getting a lot for that. But it's up to you to justify if that is a price that you can make peace with and if you want to consider the Razorback. So I'll leave that up to you if you think it's worth it. Uh, what else about this bike? I don't know. It was a ton of fun. I'm really glad that Amp Rides allowed this bike to make a stop in North Carolina so I have a chance to get out and ride it. Thank you so much. If you got any questions about this bike I didn't cover, drop them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer. Check out Amp Rides if you're looking for a powerful e-bike. I will link this one in the description below. It's just a link. I don't get anything if you buy one. So check them out though. They got some pretty cool options. And as always, if you like content like this and enjoyed the video, do me a favor, consider hitting subscribe. I'll talk to y'all later. Thank you.